Welcome back to another charger review. Today I have the Mi Boxer or My Boxer, depending on how you wish to pronounce it, C4 Smart Charger in for testing and review. Now this was sent to me by the company, but I'm gonna be reviewing it. So we'll test all of the areas on the charging functions and see how it stacks up later on. On the front of the box, you will see here some of the features. We have individual charging slots. We have um, compatibility with lithium ion, the three voltages, nickel metal hydride, cadmium, safety features, as well as resistance and capacity testing. So it's not just a charger. This side's just the safety certification marks. And this lists out a wide range of cells. You will see all of the sizes listed on the side here. Note that it won't take the D size batteries. It covers pretty much everything else though. Now this section on the back covers more of the features. You've short circuit protection, you have overcharge protection, activation on zero voltage batteries. It also supports small capacity battery charging too. We'll get into them, some of those features later on. This is the cable that I got with it. It's a figure of eight, there's a UK plug. You will get a different plug depending on the region that you're in. And it is an adapter for the AAA batteries. Unusual to see that, it's nice to have that included. Now on the instruction manual, you will see some of the features listed out again. For me, the manual is a bit on the weak side because the font is quite small. So I'd make that a bit bigger, but um, it does cover the basics that you need to run through. And the operation here, it does look more complicated than it is. It's actually quite a straightforward charger to use. It just perhaps could be better laid out and a bit clearer with some translation errors as well, but you can work through it and easily operate the unit once you've had a quick read. Definitely worth looking at the uh, voltage settings that you might need to change if you're using different types of lithium battery like the lithium iron phosphate. Also the current settings are something you might want to look into if you are charging the lower capacity cells. So they recommend charging low capacity cells of under 1000 milliamps an hour at the lower charging rates. We'll go into that later on. Taking a look at the unit, very nicely built, um, solid plastics. We have a protection cover on the LCD screen, so we shall take that off. It's just to stop the scratches in the shipping. And onto the case itself, very nice, uh, fire retardant materials. It feels better than most chargers actually, and sliders are also very smooth and metal. And on the underside we have ventilation slots, and there are six silicone pads. I will zoom in a bit closer so you can read the details on that. As you can see, the three types of lithium ion can be charged with this. So basically everything that you're going to run into, apart from the largest capacity cells, there's not much to see on the sides apart from at the top where you have the figure of eight socket and there is another one to the left which you can use with a car adapter. They have raised points on the contact points here for the charging. Not exactly sure why they've done that, but it can help with some types of cell. And you'll also see the same thing, raised points on the tips of the sliders. Now, if you're going to put in the very small batteries, as with most chargers, they can move around a bit and be a bit tricky. So they've given you this adapter so you can fit two cells in. It's quite nice to see that included. Most makers don't bother doing that. And you can fit the adapter in any of the three positions. Certainly helps a bit with the very small cells aligning them up correctly. I'm comparing it to the Nightcore D4, which is a very popular charger, and you can see the size difference. The C4 is a bit taller than the Nightcore. It also has a slightly shorter slot, so I haven't had too many issues with this, but some protected lithium cells can be a little bit tight in the C4, so I perhaps would increase the height of the slots just a few millimeters. You can see the Width is also a fraction wider than the D4. Don't really see the size as an issue for home charging, though it's a bit larger than some of the ones that I've used. I'm now powering up both units just so you can see the displays. They have a fairly bright blue backlight, but you can turn that off if you wish. Now the buttons on this are silicone or rubber. They're not hard plastic. We'll just insert a lithium cell into the full slot. Now this comes up with a resistance test, but only on the full slot. This also does capacity testing, which we'll look at. We have a reading here of 152. That is um, reasonably accurate, it seems to be, but it can vary depending on the charge state. So I would perhaps try it a few different times to actually get an accurate reading. And you'll see it start charging. It charges in stages. It starts off with a slightly slower charge and then ramps up. 
once it's been in the charger for about a minute or so. So you can see I'm on a 350 milliamps charge. And now it's going to ramp up to the high charging current, which is 800 milliamps. Now the fourth slot also has that additional functionality. You can see the um, timer or milliamps an hour it's been changed to. So if you push into that, you'll see the icons next to the battery status charging. They will flash and then you will see that it's going to charge the cell up fully. Then it's going to discharge the cell and count the capacity of that. That can take quite a long time depending on the capacity of the cell, particularly for some of the larger lithium ion batteries. It's going to take a while and we can just push through the settings and you will be able to change the battery type if it's lithium up to 4.35 or the lithium iron phosphate. So you will default to 4.2 as the charging rate for the standard 3.7 volt cells or you can manually change that if you want. And you can also go in and change the current as well. You just push slightly longer to change the settings. It does take a while to get used to, but it's fairly easy. So we drop down to 350 milliamps charge and then back up to the 800. If you don't want the backlight on, you can just push and hold the slot button and it turns it off. You will still be able to see display in reasonable light. I have a large 26650 cell in the left hand slot now and that runs through exactly the same procedure it starts off at the lower 350 milliamps charge and then it moves up to the full charging rate if the current is set to high that is and we can see it here now 800 slot button just as it says move through the slot so you only get detailed information once you move through each individual slot it does show you the charging um, level of the batteries though but if you want a detailed breakdown for example the timer and the voltage you'll have to use the slot button to cycle through them you will also need to adjust the current if you wish to use the lower charging speeds manually it will default to the high current as standard I find it okay to use, just took a little while to get used to the fact you have to push and hold the uh, mode button to change the settings. Now I've loaded it up with some cells here just to see how it performs. And I'm also going to try some nickel metal hydride. Now the charging rates on nickel metal hydride are completely different. The high rate is 300 milliamps and the low is 150. Now at the final stages of charging, and these are fairly well charged these cells, the charging rate will increase to 600 milliamps. That's a resistance test come up on the slot four. That's the only slot that you can use for the capacity and resistance testing, unfortunately. I'm not exactly sure why there is a limitation on that. Um, it would be something which I would like to see addressed. So the charging rates are fairly slow for nickel metal hydride cells. I've now got a small lithium battery inserted. This is the type of cell that you are going to want to use the lower charge rate on. You can see here it's gone to the 350 milliamp setting and then it will increase up to the full 800. So at that charging rate is too high for a cell that's that small. The capacity of that is probably only around about 300 milliamps an hour. So we we'll drop that down to the lower charging rate. That is a useful feature to have. You also have one on the D4 that can do that. It's a CR123A cell here, rechargeable. Again, exactly the sort of cell that you want to have a reduced charging rate on. Not all chargers offer that low charging rate, so it's definitely something which you will want to use. Um, it's probably not unsafe to charge some of these cells at that charging rate, but particularly for the smaller ones, I don't think it's going to do them a lot of good. So I always charge small cells at the lower charging rate. You'd probably get away with it with higher capacity CR123A cells. It's exactly the same procedure for the D4. You have slightly different charging rates. Its default charging speed is 750 milliamps. 
the buttons are on the side on the D4 and then you can just select the low and you see it drop down to 300. So the low charging rate is a little bit lower, but 350 is certainly okay. Now for the larger 26650 cells, these are quite large and some chargers can accept one. This can take two, but you can put them in the middle slot as well if you wish, but you won't be able to use the slot next to it with another 26650. So I tend to use them on the outer bays only. The D4, depending on whether it's a flat or a button top cell, you can fit either one or two in. You'll definitely be able to fit one in. So the fact you can fit two easily in this is a bonus. Cells like this do take a long time to charge. So even at the 800 milliamp setting, that cell has a capacity of over 5,000 milliamps an hour. So that's going to take uh, quite a while to charge. Perhaps would have liked uh, the ability to change the charging speed per channel. If we could get maybe one 1.5 amps, you can get the 800 across all four though with the lithium cells. Now, this is a brief guide on the internal resistance and it's just a rough guide. Um, if you have readings that are high, three, 400, um, or even higher than that, it would be a fairly good indication that the cell it has high internal resistance, which should lead to reduced capacity and poor charging, and it probably won't hold a charge very well. But it is worth running that test a few times because it's not always 100% accurate depending on the charge condition of the battery. So if you have a fully charged battery and you put it in there, you might get a slightly different reading, but it's a useful feature to have. Just a shame you can't have it across all of the slots on the charger. You also have... Um, anti-polarity protection so if you put the cells in the wrong way around which I'm doing here the reverse polarity you'll see the error comes up and it won't charge them so completely safe in that regard now some general thoughts on charging versus the D4 uh, personally I found the D4 to be a good charger overall it's always been consistent um, there's never anything 100% perfect Certainly some cells can, depending on the condition, charge to slightly higher voltages and some can read a bit low. The D4 can't do any testing at all. Um, and the other limitations are the fact that if you use more than two bays, your charging speed drops down. So you only get 750 milliamps on two bays at the same time. So one or two cells and the minute you use another bay, you've dropped your charging rate down to half that or under half that. Um, you get about 375 per bay on the D4 fully loaded, which isn't particularly quick. The D4 isn't a particularly fast charger. That is its main disadvantage. Now I normally do my voltage tests on chargers and I do the same with this, but there is a slight difference with this charger. There is a slight trickle charge even on lithium ion cells and it tends to keep the voltage at 4.2. You can see there is 4.2 on the uh, multimeter here. So the display is accurate on this version that I have here, but um, that trickle charge is not needed for lithium ion charging and it shouldn't be present um, because if you leave them in the charger, it could start to wear out the cells. Certainly if you leave them in there for a long period of time, that's something which does need to be looked at. The D4 will terminate the charge. It won't put any current into lithium ion or nickel hydride cells once it's finished charging. You see here the same. 4.2 so it's charging them up to a good rate it's just it just needs to terminate completely you see here the capacity test has finished because it's fully discharged and now it's recharging the cell so if you want you can actually take the cell out or let it um, charge again fully it's a very handy feature to have particularly if you're concerned about the endurance of a battery if it's uh, worn out certainly the capacity will be greatly reduced really is a shame that you can't use it on the other slots because it can take quite a significant amount of time to uh, complete that, particularly with the larger capacity cells. Now the voltage readout on the D4 freezes on completion as well as the timer and I'm flipping down the any loop and you see that the voltage has dropped, which is normal. That's because it stopped charging the cell completely. What happens on the C4 is that it applies another trickle charge, even though it's using a delta V charging method which detects a voltage drop and heat increase and that isn't optimal and there's no need to use that unless 
you are using a voltage termination with a slight trickle charge. So that's something that I'm a bit puzzled around. Um, it's not really uh, a good design for a charger to have that. Most of the good chargers would use a delta V, but it's okay to use a termination on voltage and then apply a slight trickle charge. Heat isn't a problem with the charger at all. The batteries get slightly warm, uh, particularly nickel hydride at the end of the charging phase, but not, not much. You can see here that the cell voltage is actually increased on slot one. That's because it's feeding uh, a slight charge. It's lower than the normal charge by quite a bit, but it's still quite high for a trickle charge. So that's something to watch out for. It does um, put some trickle charge into the cells, so I would not leave the cells in the charge for a long period of time after they've finished. We also got good results off of the capacity test. It was very close to the Fox Nova charger that I commonly use. That can charge all four slots. Um, capacity test them at the same time and it charges at a faster rate. There are some other disadvantages. I've done a specific review on that charger too. Summing up with the C4 charger, there is the potential for a really good charger to be here, but there are a few areas which I think do need to be looked at. The first is the trickle charge for both nickel metal hydride and lithium ion cells. It's not needed and that's something which needs to be changed. I'd also like to be able to increase the charging speed on individual channels above the 800 milliamps that would be useful for large capacity cells and you cannot charge nickel metal hydride or nickel cadmium cells at a very fast speed there's no need for such a low speed of 300 milliamps high capacity aas can take a significantly higher charge up to around about an amp quite safely uh, the capacity test is limited to just slot four that's uh, something which is a bit of a shame if you could use them on all of the slots that would be great on the positive side the charging speeds are quite good for four lithium ion cells compared to some chargers you can reduce the charging rate on individual slots as well which is handy for low capacity cells the display is quite clear and easy to read and it has good build quality so overall uh, mixed feelings with this one. I think they could go back and adjust a few areas on the charge before I'd like to give it a full recommendation. But um, if they can do that, we have a good charger here. Let's hope they can address some of those issues. If you found the review helpful, please subscribe where I'll be doing more reviews of this type and chargers, batteries, torches and other devices too. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below and I will see you in the next video.